From the outside looking in, things can look very glamorous. It looks like models are perfect and live these perfect lives and they just earn a lot of money and get free things for just standing there and taking pictures and looking good. And people don't realize how lonely, how unhappy, how uncomfortable, and how dangerous your life can feel during this all. Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for being here. My name is Taylor. If you're new here, I am from Canada. I'm living in Hong Kong. My modeling career has led me here. I have been a model for over 10 years. I don't necessarily identify modeling as my main career now. I'm more of a like content creator, but I do take job, the odd job from time to time still and modeling was my main profession for most of my life. So that is what I want to talk about today. And I am very much aware that modeling is not the toughest job. I know a lot of people have things tougher, especially people like doctors right now. I cannot speak for them. I can only speak for myself and share my own personal story, my own personal journey, struggles, experiences. And I think that there is beauty in that. There is beauty in everyone's own personal story and there's things that we can take away and learn from those stories. These things will help us all grow and that is why I wanna share them. I have shared a lot about the good sides of modeling, the behind the scenes where everything is everything is good, the photos or the videos that come out of that that look very great and I'm sometimes looking like a completely different person because of Photoshop but that's okay too. You know the amazing stories of traveling and meeting people and all of that which is all very great but there is a whole other side to it that I haven't talked about pretty much at all because there's a lot of difficult things mentally that come with this career choice, self-esteem issues and um, insecurities, unhealthy habit, and just some like kind of scary stories that have happened to me or girls around me over the years. So I wanted to open up about that. Maybe it's because I've been spending a lot more time with myself lately because of self isolation and just reflecting more on my past and uh, just getting to know myself a lot better or maybe it's because I've been diving into really old movies and diving into Marilyn Monroe and her story and how sad and lonely she was. Uh, I, I don't know. I just wanna I want to share this aspect of my life. I Hope you find it interesting. I hope you find it helpful. I hope you learn something or I don't know. I don't know <laughs> Let's begin Starting at 16 part-time because I was still in school and then in university So I would only kind of do it on weekends or after school or in the summer is when I would take overseas contracts is quite late for modeling uh, When I traveled a lot of girls were like 13 14 years old But I do not regret that in any sense looking back now. I am so happy that I was more mature and um, more capable of making difficult decisions. Having a model for me wasn't an easy thing. I was bullied a lot as a kid and told I was chubby and then I lost weight. I went to agencies. I wasn't small enough at that time either. I lost more weight and then I went to another one. I was on the shorter side. Uh, I got a whole bunch of no's and I finally got into one and when I got in I felt like I was into this world that I wanted to be so involved in for so long and it was so difficult for me and I was finally in and I wanted to stay in by whatever means necessary. I would never gain weight again. I would never be told that I had to lose weight. I would be in full control and I would always be on top of my game. So I sort of entered in with that mindset of almost I wanted to do it for me, but at the same time, I always felt like I had something to prove to other people too, which was a very dangerous mindset to have when you need to seek validation from others, which <laughs> is actually the whole, which is actually what happens on a daily basis in modeling. You need to get people to book you jobs. So it's just a very um, difficult power dynamic because you always feel like you need to do what's asked of you or you will simply be looked over or replaced. There's always someone younger, prettier, skinnier, whatever to fill your shoes. So you always feel like you have to say yes. This sort of power dynamic in the industry is what leads to so many unfortunate events where girls feel pressure to do things that they normally wouldn't do 
and then afterwards stay silent in fear of ruining the relationship with their agency or with that photographer and therefore hurt their chances of future work. So they decided it's just easier to stay silent, earn money while they can in the short time that they can and then get out. And um, it's there's just many times where things can feel uncomfortable at best or really dangerous at worst. So, um, and, and things are changing nowadays because of social movements and social media, but there is still a long ways to go. And this could be sexually, which I was fortunate enough to never experience anything like that, besides the embarrassment of having to change in front of people. I think that's as far as uh, what I felt, because a lot of the times that shows you weren't given proper change room, so you were just kind of changing in front of everyone in a little corner maybe. Um, or someone was helping, a lot of times someone is helping you to get dressed, so a stranger is physically putting your clothes on for you quickly and pushing you out. Or it could be financially, where an agency is stealing from you or not giving you all of your money or putting you in such a large amount of debt that is almost impossible to get out of. And then it could also be mentally by things that are said to you or things that you see. And that could be at work in a studio by what some teams are doing behind the scenes or saying behind the scenes or at home in the model's apartment, things you see and hear there. I've seen some things, I've seen some things. One of my scariest overseas trips was when I went to Europe. My mother agency in Canada had set it up. A mother agency is very important. They're basically an agency that looks after you all over the world. So you really need to find one that you trust, that has your best interest at heart. And they will like place you in different agencies. They will manage you if you have any problems financially, anything with the agencies that you're working with in a different country, they will help handle that. So they had placed me with someone who they had worked with before, but maybe that model didn't have the same experience. When I arrived, I was told to take a taxi to the model apartment and we were driving. I had the general address, but after I got there, I realized that it wasn't exact, so I couldn't find the place. So I had rung up the agency from the taxi driver's cell phone because this was a time, this was, how old was I? I was 20. This was a time when uh, smartphones didn't exist. So I basically had a map that I bought and that was it. The agencies usually will give you a flip phone to carry around with you sometimes, um, but that was all I had. So I used the taxi driver's phone to call the contact I had. That contact had no clue who I was or that I was arriving, nothing. So I was just like, okay, great. So then the taxi driver just kept driving and I didn't know what to do. Do I get out somewhere? I don't know where I am. Do I try and find a hotel room? I didn't have much money. Your agency will advance your flight and they will advance your model, your accommodation. And then once you work, they'll give you a bit of pocket money too. And then once you work, you pay them back. So often girls will arrive with very little to no money because you're advanced things and you're there to make money and then you would bring back money at the end. We were driving around for a while, the meter's going up. I don't know where I am, where to go. The people don't speak English. Thankfully, I saw some girls walking around that I thought were maybe models. So I yelled out to them and it, it was models with my agency. So we were in the right area and then they, show me to where we lived. So that was the first red flag of that agency. And then after working with them, they would often have us go to go sees all the time. And a lot of go sees everywhere in the world, often when a model first arrives, they will go to meet different like marketing agencies or different famous photographers that get a lot of jobs. Because if you meet them and they like you, then they can refer you to different clients. And so it can help you to get more work or they could also do um, test shoots with you where they do a shoot for their book and your book. And so it's sort of a free photo shoot. And it's always good to get test shoots in different countries because each country has their own style. So photos in my book that would help me to work well in Japan wouldn't work in Europe. So you, you kind of always need to be doing test shoots. So you would go on these go sees and oftentimes it would just be this one male photographer in the room and you would be alone with them. Once again, this is pre smartphone or anything like you're very much alone. Um, and then I remember going back one of the times and the agency had told me that I should 
dress more sexy, that I should wear a push-up bra and show more skin and just have more sex appeal when I'm going to these go -sees. And I remember feeling incredibly uncomfortable because that has never been who I am. <laughs> Um, I mean, all the power to women who love looking sexy and showing their curves or showing their skin or whatever they want. I'm all for doing whatever makes you feel strong and confident and powerful and good. But that just wasn't me personally. It just wasn't what I signed up for. I wasn't going to be sexy to men. So then I spoke to my mother agency back in Canada and I told them about this situation. I just didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel that they were professional. I didn't feel like I would be getting the kind of work that I was there to get. So on my time off, I decided to go see another agency that was there too and they decided to take me on. So one night in the middle of the night, I packed up all my stuff. I was staying in the model apartment with like many, many girls and the, the agency was nearby. So I had to wait till the agency was closed. So it's late at night. I packed up my stuff and moved to the other agency in the middle of the night. And uh, yeah, that was the end of that. I think I subconsciously did the opposite of what I was told to do. I wanted to get rid of all my curves any sex appeal I had and I lost so much weight. I was at my lowest weight ever. I five foot seven, I was around 95 to 97 pounds and I was super skinny. I got so skinny that I lost my period. I wasn't getting it. And then I got sent to a doctor who gave me some pills that I got my period every day. So my health was just a mess. My skin was a mess, but I was crazy skinny and I was working well. And that was all that really mattered to the agency at the end of the day. They don't really care about your well being, they care about their money and you paying them back for your expenses and them earning money. When you work in a country, you would often get sent to different countries or cities nearby and a lot of times you're just told to go to a certain location and look for someone to pick you up like with a sign or something and it's just so dangerous when you think back now i remember just getting on a plane during that trip and going somewhere and a bunch of young kids picked me up in a car and a lot of the teams like a lot of creative teams are very young that's that's quite normal it's normal here too in hong kong but i remember just thinking these people we like drove off into the middle of nowhere into the mountains to shoot and i remember just thinking like these people could kill me right now and no one would know for days a lot of these things too my family doesn't even know they still don't know i haven't told a lot of these things to anyone close to my life like Tom will tell things here and there if it comes up, but I won't just sit down and tell them him all these stories. I always didn't want to tell my family what I was going through on those days or what I was scared of because I didn't want them to worry. And so then I didn't really have anyone to talk to when I was overseas and living alone. I mean, you, you have the models that you live with, but a lot of them are from different countries. A lot of them are doing their own things and you do make good connections with some that, that you can really get to know. But then a lot of times they will also leave because you're coming, going at different, coming and going at different times so you spend a lot of time alone and you're forced to be your own parent be your own superman you need to do everything on your own you need to take care of yourself you need to take care of your own mental state you need to take care of your own safety you need to manage your money really well you're all on your own uh, so i learned to be independent and I learned and I grew up really fast although I was already an adult but that's another reason why I, I really am happy that I started a lot later in life and another thing that a lot of people don't know is a lot of models earn next to nothing or are extremely in debt at the end so you take these overseas contracts and they do advance your pocket money your flight your accommodations but a lot of times the econom econom econ sorry model brain your accommodations are crazy expensive so you'll be living with in a tiny apartment with six or seven girls bunk beds stacked up one bathroom to share like a tiny tiny bathroom to share between all of you and you're all paying around one two three thousand us dollars per month depending on what city it is so times seven the the agencies are earning a lot on that accommodation um so you already have a big debt to pay off when you arrive and that's really stressful so you don't want to say no or um, be problematic at any point during your contract because you know you're in debt to them so in most countries a lot of clubs 
allow models to come and eat and drink for free. Some give um, dinner and then they expect them to stay after and drink. And some models take it as just a fun thing on the side every once in a while, but some models take it as one of their only meals of the day. You're given pocket money, but it's not that much and it pays for your transportation or any medicine or anything you may, need, you may need, your food, whatever. And some girls don't budget themselves well enough and they spend quite a bit at the beginning of the week and then they have nothing to live off of towards the end of the week. So a lot of them rely on these clubs to eat and then they start going there every day. They start getting involved in dangerous people or becoming addicted to drugs. Um, I've heard of girls being offered jobs to attend people's birthday parties or rich people's events and that creates a whole other <laughs> possible stream of problems. A lot of girls find themselves in these positions where they've arrived in these countries, they haven't been able to get work for whatever reason and then they feel forced or stuck and they have to take jobs that they didn't come to do because of the debt they owe and it's just a... Yeah, especially if they're young and in general I've always worked better in Asia because of my specific look and my height I'm at the shorter end of the spectrum of modeling I'm only five foot seven which worked to my advantage here as a commercial model because I can fit in the sample sizes really well and my shoe size in particular the shoe sizes in Japan and Hong Kong and Asia are really small so yeah this was always a good market for me and in general it is very very safe you have managers that take you around in japan and in korea and stuff like that um so you're you're very much protected and uh in general things are very safe but things still do happen so you still need to be careful i still did have my underwear stolen off of my third floor model apartment in japan and i still oh when i was at a casting one day because you go in these casting vans and if you don't have that particular casting you have to wait in the car and I was waiting in the car by myself for the girls and my manager to come back and a guy jerked off right next to me in the car window in Ginza in the middle of daylight we were kind of parked next to a bunch of trees so I don't think anyone else could see but yeah that was pretty terrifying I just started honking the horn and then he ran away something that was really out of my control and probably was a outcome of me like being so low in body fat and being so low in my weight is my skin was always crazy and that was something that my agencies were always on me for they were always looking at my skin and telling me to do things like drink more water or do this or do that and that would make me more stressed because I would just constantly be thinking about my skin there was one time I booked this job I was so happy because it was a two or three day job and it was very well paying and I had to travel out to another city so it took me like half a day to get there and then once I arrived the client looked at my skin saw that I was breaking out and they called my agency and cancelled me without paying me and I just went all the way there and I remember feeling so embarrassed and so disappointed in myself you just always got to be ready, you always got to be perfect and not even your standard of perfect but other, other people's standard of perfect which you will never fulfill because everyone sees beauty in a different way. You're just constantly riding a lot of highs and lows. Maybe you're booking a lot of jobs at one point, you're being told you're beautiful and that is that feeling is really addicting but that sometimes you can hit a very low point where you're not booking anything or you're even being cancelled and that starts to really tear away at your soul. You start to hate the things that make you human, you hate the things that are natural and, and inevitable, you hate when you get pimples, you hate when you grow a centimeter somewhere, you hate when you see a fine line, you are constantly fighting against the time running out and maybe you need to save more money, maybe you haven't gone to college or university so you don't know what you're gonna do after that, maybe you've built a life in a completely new and foreign country for the past four years and you're not ready to just pack it up and leave and move on to something else because you don't know what the heck you're gonna move on to. <laughs> I think that's part of the reason why I lost myself so much or I went to such an extreme situation when I moved to Japan because I moved when I was turning 25 and to me my time was already up then by the time you're 25 in Asia especially in Japan your career is practically over if you go to castings as a model without a name you have to basically say you're younger I and back in my day anyways I don't know how it is now 
So I like, I tried to appear as young as possible. I felt like I was starting my career over again because I was moving more into the talent industry, but I felt like my time was already up. So I had to appear as young as possible. Not that I wasn't into that style of dressing or like cutesy things, I was, but I, I took it to a whole nother level that where I completely lost myself. I sabotaged my relationships because of it. I, I was also online at the time, so I was not only seeking validation from people in real life at castings for jobs to hire me, but also seeking validation from people online. I always felt the need to be perfect and on my top game and look like this, this doll-like figure, which I knew myself wasn't real. To the point where I would only put out one video a month because I spent so much time to plan it, to shoot it with the most perfect lighting, the most perfect makeup, the most perfect hair, um, and then editing it afterwards. There was times that I wouldn't leave my house for a long period of time. When I did, I would go out in full, a full um, like outfit where you couldn't even recognize me. Like I would wear a wig, I would wear a mask, I, I would dress like a completely different person because I was scared of people seeing me in real life and seeing that I wasn't really like that perfect doll that they saw online. Oh, that's a whole nother story that has nothing to do with modeling. <laughs> I feel like I'm having a therapy session. It's weird how you can be so confident, but so insecure at the same time. Or look so confident on the outside, but be incredibly insecure on the inside at the same time. So what do I want you to take away from this? And what have I learned through all of this? Or how have I changed? One, learn to not let others' opinions validate you. This is so important and I know it's easier said than done. Um, because one thing I've learned from modeling is it's not about you, it's about them. You will never achieve perfection because perfection is how others perceive it. This was made very apparent by a video I did about beauty around the world where I asked people to Photoshop me to their country's standards and I looked completely different. Sometimes I was crazy skinny, sometimes I was curvy. Um, that Some wanted me with different makeup, different hair. And that's the same with modeling. I had to learn that if I do not get a job, it is not about me. I just was not right for that job. And it took a long time to get to that point and it was very hard at times to not be jealous or competitive with other girls or to not go home and ask my agency, you know, why didn't I get the job? And then they'll say, oh, they went for this girl that, and then I would look at that girl and compare myself to her and think, oh, you know, she's a little bit skinnier than me. Because a lot of the times at castings, they will have a specific type they're looking for. So you're gonna walk in and you will see kind of like different versions of yourself. So it could be like a blonde that's around your height with like your kind of look, that's what they're looking for. So you look around and you see all these girls and then you start to compare the little details. And I always thought, you know, if, if I was a bit skinnier, maybe I would have booked that job. So. I thought, you know, if I get skinnier, um, if I clear my skin more, if I get into this modeling world, you know, I will be happy. But then you get to all those points and you're not happy. You will never be happy and you will never fulfill everything you want to be because you're looking outwards. You can't be happy with not loving yourself and that those things are not your true self. They are all what other people want to be. You won't be living your life, you'll be living the life that others want you to live. And stop trying to fit in everywhere because you want to be liked and you don't want to be judged. You will never make real connections that way because real connections come from you being your true self and then finding your people. I was trained so long to be that for my job, to go to, sometimes I switch who I am 10 times a day going to different castings and at the end of it all, I completely lost myself. And when I transitioned into YouTube, I took that mentality to YouTube and tried to keep this level of perfection and really listen to what people had to say about me. And it drove me insane. To realize that not everyone has your best interest in mind. This is true for agencies, photographers, the models you live with if you are a model, but I think you can take this into your own workplace or anywhere. So always do what you feel comfortable with and don't be afraid of speaking up. Sometimes it can be hard when you really want something so bad and you're trying to climb the ladder, but um, 
when you start to climb that ladder and get higher and higher, you won't be any happier. If uh, it, it took a lot of uncomfortableness and it took you losing yourself to get there. And I hope it doesn't seem like I am blaming the industry or blaming certain people because a lot of this has more to do with the way I view myself and the way I took things in and internalized it because I, gave, I was the one who gave the industry or certain people control over the way I felt. And actually I'm extremely grateful for the whole thing. Would I take anything back? No, I would do it all again because it has led me to incredible places. I've met amazing people. I have friends all over the world. I have done some very memorable jobs. I was able to earn quite a bit of money, which allowed me to invest at a young age and provide more security for my future. It led me to the life I have here, my friends, my family, my home, everything. Um, but all of that didn't come at no mental cost, which have gotten better with time as I remove myself and um, I got older and I surrounded myself with different people but those thoughts do creep back from time to time and I have to keep reminding myself that I am more than just my skin and my value doesn't go down when I gain one centimeter. It and then my final point is unlike what we're told with modeling, which is for the most part true for most people, there is no expiry on what you want to do with your life or with your career. So. It, in modeling, we're told that our peak success is in our 20s, which can be true, but there's so many things you can take and move forward with that can make you even more successful in life and even more happy than you were at that point. Because say, for example, with modeling, we learn so many skills that we can take up with us, how to um, network, how to manage our money, how to, uh, dress like in terms of style in terms of makeup how to do our hair um, f photography there's so many little things that you can take with you from what you learn the good and the bad all of your experiences and then mix it up with your passions and move forward to something even bigger and better you you just you can never be afraid to start over because you're not starting from nothing you are starting from your experiences and there's a difference with that i guess what i wanted to do with this video was highlight the reality the sort of full picture because modeling is kind of like how people talk about social media in the sense that it's like a highlight reel you don't really see all the aspects or much of the negative side of things so in an ad where a model looks beautiful and she's probably very photoshopped um, and there's teams that put that together and um, there's so much that goes into one photo if you even peel back that other layer, you don't understand what that model did to get there or their mental state or their struggles um, or anything like that. There's a whole other side to the industry. I just want people to be aware of that going in if you're thinking of going into that or if you know someone in it or if you're a parent and your child wants to go in it. You need to make sure you are mentally strong, you need to be street smart and you need to make sure that you have people you can talk to and that you can trust and have a very good relationship with your mother agency. I'm very thankful that my parents raised me the way that they did. They gave me a lot of strength. They gave me a lot of knowledge. I know that I was able to make good decisions because of their parenting and I am very thankful for that. I know a lot of you have wanted me to talk about um, body issues, body dysmorphia, my relationship with food, but I don't feel like I'm quite ready just yet. I think that topic is a very difficult one and I want to educate myself more so that I can guide this community a little better with the proper terms and just be aware of the possible triggers to people. I, I just want to tread very carefully. So I need a bit more time for that. I bought some books, but if you have any books or articles or anything you want to recommend me to read, then please let me know below in the comments. Um, yeah, I feel like this was a very general self-esteem, mental health, model reality video. I could dive deeper into specific topics, but yeah, let me know if you like this video and you want me to. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.